Hey everyone, welcome to another top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 favorite Touchstone Pictures movies. Yes, years and years ago, I did my top 10 of my favorite MGM movies. People seem to really, really enjoy that top 10 list, so I thought, hey, let's fucking do it again with Touchstone Pictures. Someone recommended for me to do this top 10 list, so I'm like, sounds like a pretty good idea, so why not? Let's do it. Let's not waste any time. Touchstone Pictures. It's a studio that aligned with other big studios like Disney, DreamWorks, uh, Universal, or shit like that. They have a ton of movies. These are my 10 favorites. And as always, for a top 10 list, you gotta have your, let's do it, honorable mentions. I haven't done that in a while, eh? <laughs> my honorable mentions are 10 Things They Hate About You, Pretty Woman, War Horse, Coyote Ugly, Fright Night, The Patriot, and Air Force One. All solid flicks just come in the top 10 list, but we did make my top 10 was my number 10. My number 10 is Martin Scorsese's The Color of Money. The Color of Money is such a damn great movie. It's about, well, pool hustling. And it is a sequel to The Hustler, which is another really great Paul Newman movie. I actually like this one just a little more. I love Paul Newman, and I love Tom Cruise in this movie. Tom Cruise is just so... It, that shit crazy and when he swings the pool stick around and everything it's just so great it's just a cool underground hustling movie about billiards and i love it love the cast i love some of the dark comedy in it i love the ending the ending is so great the soundtrack is fantastic and just i, I love that this is the movie that paul newman finally won his oscar for but it's still a great performance and a great movie and yeah one of my favorites definitely in my top 10 of my favorite scorsese movies so all right, number nine. Number nine is an underrated Western called Open Range. Open Range is so good. Uh, Kevin Costner, you got Robert Duvall. What a damn great movie. Beautifully directed by Kevin Costner himself. Uh, it's It's got such beautiful scenery, such amazing cinematography, such a gripping story, such a great cowboy story. The whole third act when they're in the village and that... <laughs> they're eating the chocolate, and they're having the final showdown. So good. It's like something out of uh, Once Upon a Time in the West. It's so great. There's a lot of scenes that are very homage to Sergio Leone's classic 60s spaghetti westerns. But at the same time, there's also a lot of homage to dramatic westerns like Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven. There's such a lot of great creative ideas Kevin Costner did. Even his own homage to Dance of the Wolves in the 90s. Love this movie. I think it's so overlooked. And every time I mention this movie, a lot of people have no idea what I'm talking about. Go check it out, please. <laughs> Coming at number eight is Good Morning Vietnam. Good Morning Vietnam is a great Robin Williams uh, dramatic war comedy. This is during the, the Vietnam War, and uh, Robin Williams plays a radio host, and he's hosting for all the soldiers that are fighting in Vietnam. He is in Vietnam, and he uses his comedy to cheer up the day. He does the morning broadcast, and all he does is he tells very crude jokes, and it builds a lot of people's spirits up, and it's it's a very funny movie. It's a very deep movie. Robin Williams is incredibly good in this movie. There's also a really good twist with, uh, he meets this young boy who be, he becomes friends with, and you find out something about the boy, that, uh, that uh, something you just don't see coming. I didn't see coming when I first saw this movie. It's a really good story, though. It's a very emotional movie, and, and as much as it is funny, but it, it does also talk about the horrific nature of war and battle so good movie though very good movie all right number seven number seven is m night Shyamalan's unbreakable it's my favorite Shyamalan movie it's a great uh bruce willis and uh samuel jackson are amazing this is probably the best score by james newton howard james newton howard's score is incredible uh i love that it's just it's a it's a it's a superhero movie but it's also like a love letter to comic books and comic book movies. And Tarantino also had a theory about this movie is that he calls the movie, it's a Superman origin story. It's about if Superman didn't know he was Superman. That's how Tarantino sees the movie. That's interesting. I don't see the movie like that. I see it as Shyamalan doing his own original superhero movie. And it's a very dark and realistic, gritty superhero movie. But yeah, I love it. I think uh, Bruce Willis and Sam Jackson work off each other so brilliantly well. The ending is so good. And uh, every time I hear the, the amazing score when Bruce Willis is, like, in the train station, like, touching everybody with his arms out and reading everyone's, like, thoughts and stuff. Such a great scene. Very good movie. 
I really wish Shyamalan did more better movies like this, but hey, we got this in the sixth sense, so beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> All right, number six. Number six is one of my favorite Jackie Chan comedies, and that's Shanghai Noon. I love this movie. I This is another just feel-good movie for me. Like, I grew up with this movie as a kid. I had the VHS tape, and I always watched it. I was always a huge Jackie Chan fan. Like, I loved, uh, like, Police Story. I always loved Rumble in the Bronx. Even, like, uh, Mr. Nice Guy, I enjoyed. Uh, I just, like, Super Cop. Like, I just, I've always loved Jackie Chan's movies. This is the one, though, that always put a smile on my face. This is in Rush Hour. I actually like this more than Rush Hour, but I love Rush Hour 1 and 2 as well. And I love Shanghai Nights. I think it's an underrated sequel, but Shanghai Noon is great. It's a great, like, martial arts movie, also a Western. <laughs> it's Jackie Chan's character, and he's going into a Western setting to rescue the princess, and he meets Owen Wilson, a cowboy, who is the shittiest cowboy, but he's teaching Jackie Chan how to be a cowboy. <laughs> it's... It's so funny. It's got a great soundtrack. It's got a great comedic duo of Jack Chan and almost in kick-ass action scenes. A knockout performance by Lucy Liu. Wow. <laughs> it is, it's just a blast, and I always love it. Always puts a smile on my face. Like, I love Shanghai Noon. <laughs> All right, number five is my favorite movie. Well, second favorite movie directed by Robert Zemeckis. That is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Favorite being Back to the Future. Second is Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Great movie. It's a movie everyone knows, everyone's talked a lot about. This is literally the most groundbreaking animated film ever created. Animation mixed with, like, human character CG. It's like CG brought to life with animation and, and live-action people. So cool. About tunes uh, communicating with the real world. It's a detective story. That tune is now murdering human beings. You have to find out who this tune is, and they think it's Roger Rabbit. So this main character... Uh, played by, um, what the fuck's his name? Uh, Bob Hoskins. <laughs> I was blanking on his name. Uh, he teams up with Roger Rabbit and his uh, his wife. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they have to team up and find out who did it. It's very obvious who did it, but regardless, it's such a beautiful movie. Super funny, beautiful animation, and it's the, one of the most creative ideas ever in cinema, so... Yeah, who doesn't love Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, number four, another underrated movie directed by Mel Gibson, Apocalypto. Apocalypto is such a unique idea, such a cool concept, and diving into a story about these people and this language that you don't know, and just you want to know more about the mythos and their their society, and you want to know more about the language they're speaking. It's such a weird and out there idea, but it's so great. It's brutal, it's violent, it's atmospheric, it's got some breathtaking visuals and music, and just it's definitely one of Mel Gibson's most most ambitious movie. This was just after Passion of the Christ too, so everyone was very excited to see what next big movie he was gonna do, and this one was miles and miles better than Passion of the Christ, in my opinion, but yeah. Damn great movie. <laughs> All right, number three. Number three is one of my favorite Christopher Nolan movies, and that is The Prestige. Every magic act has three different acts. You got the pledge, the turn, and the prestige. That is such a cool idea for a magic act, and the fact that they used a three-act structure of a magic act as the plot to the movie of a three-act structure of a movie is such brilliant and creative storytelling, but this is Christopher Nolan, man. The man's a genius. Even though he makes some pretentious, boring crap like Tenet and Interstellar, he can make such brilliant, ingenious movies about magic and magicians and a complex rivalry like The Prestige. Hugh Jackman and Christian Bell knock it out of the park in this movie. Scarlett Johansson, uh, Piper Parabolo, Michael Caine, Andy Serkis, David Bowie are all strong supporting cast members as well. It's got some creative ideas. It's got a thought-provoking climax. It is just such a mind-blowing movie. And just, it's one of Nolan's best. Easily, hands down. It's better than Memento, in my opinion. Just saying. Uh, number two. Number two is another just underappreciated movie that n people just don't talk enough about. And that's The Count of Monte Cristo. I love this movie. And there's been many adaptations of The Count of Monte Cristo. This is my favorite one. The, it's the early 2000s one starring Guy Pearce and Jim Caviezel. And uh, Richard Harris as well. Uh, 
I just think this movie is just done very well. The classic versions are good, but I like this one. I like a good revenge story. I love this idea of uh, this man wrongfully accused and spending almost 20 years in a prison for something he never did. And then when he gets out, finally escapes. He takes a new identity and tracks down the woman he used to love and the man and put him, put him there so he can kill him and get his revenge. It's just such a great classic revenge story and i love uh jim caviezel in the film i love the great set pieces and i love the whole every scene when he's in the chateau teeth prison when he's talking to richard harris all of those scenes are great i don't know something about this movie i just love every time i watch it it just floors me every time and just yeah i think it's underrated so check it out <laughs> all right number one number one i'm cheating a little bit but i don't care i i went with a tie because i just couldn't pick i was always I'm like, this is number one, this is number one, this is number one. I'm like, so I'm like, I can't decide, so I'm putting both as number one. Two movies done by Tim Burton. That is The Nightmare Before Christmas and Ed Wood. One of them is produced and co-written by uh, Tim Burton. One of them is directed and produced by Tim Burton. Nightmare Before Christmas is one of my favorite Christmas movies of all time right there with It's a Wonderful Life. It's a beautiful stop-motion animated movie with some of the most iconic musical numbers ever put to cinema. Everyone knows Nightmare Before Christmas. It's the ultimate Christmas movie and it's the ultimate Halloween movie. But then you got Ed Wood. Ed Wood is an amazing sort of biopic about Edward D. Wood Jr., the worst filmmaker of all time, and him making the worst movie of all time, Plan 9 from Outer Space, with Bella Lugosi, who is played beautifully by Oscar-winning supporting actor Martin Landau. Tim Burton does an amazing job. The black and white cinematography, the crass language of Bela Lugosi is just comic gold. <laughs> Carlos, fuck you, Carlos are good enough to smell my shit. <laughs> Funny movie, Johnny Depp is so charismatic in the movie as well. Just the way, it feels like it was made in the 40s too, and I love it. The, the movie is about Ed Wood, and it feels like it was. It almost feels like it was directed by Ed Wood, and that's the genius of what Tim Burton did. See, these two movies were Tim Burton production films, and it almost makes me sad because the 90s was like the golden decade for Tim Burton. And then you look at him now, and he's just made a lot of crap. But we'll always have the past for Tim Burton. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, that's my top 10 favorite touchstone pictures, movies, in my opinion. So let me know in the comment section below. Please tell me, did you agree with the top 10 list? If not, give me your guys' top 10 favorite touchstone pictures, movies, in the comments below. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like, subscribe to the channel, and join the dark side.